Ten years after his succession, Mohammed VI remains a mystery. Head of a distinctive monarchy combining tradition and modernity, he keeps his distance through protocol and rarely grants interviews. However, the king is everywhere, on the front page of the paper, of course, but also behind all major projects in the kingdom, and especially the biggest construction sites. A thousand kilometers of highways, dozens of business districts, acres of free trade zones, and large tourism projects. For Mohammed VI, Morocco is a huge construction site in the literal sense of the word. You just have to go through the streets of the biggest cities to see these projects in Rabat, Casablanca and Tangier. But also under construction, in ways that are noticeable but perhaps less so, are Morocco's mentalities. The reform of the family code, for example, has allowed the foundations of equality between men and women to be established. But if society is evolving, the power structure has not changed in any perceptible way. Some things have been done. For example, the family code has allowed some progress. Things aren't totally equal, we know this. And the code isn't always applied as it should be. In reality, power is in the hands of the king. The government itself has no executive power. When the prime minister was named by the king, the press asked him, what's your program? He said, I'll do what the king told me. In fact, the majority of reforms come first and foremost right from the palace. The government is there to apply royal directives. Today we are faced with a super monarchy that has completely cut out institutions, the government, the parliament, and continues to pursue a governance that is more interested in co-opting the elite than in the democratic functioning of its institutions. Result, in 2007, legislative elections showed a record low in voter turnout. Moroccans avoided the polls as if they already knew that power is completely in the hands of the monarchy. I am for a king who reigns but doesn't govern. But on the other hand, he is faced with political parties that are incompetent and unable to take any responsibility. I think what he's doing is to fill this gap. One question remains, if the king's power is really just filling a gap, then isn't it also preventing a renewal of the political system?